Welcome to this webinar on tension type headache. The diagnosis of the tension type headache is mainly based on the history taking. You can do some uh, additional re research or investigations to exclude some serious disorders, but uh, for the diagnostic uh, criteria, it's not needed to do this extra uh, research or investigations. And the episodic and the gonic tension type headache you can uh, split them because they have a different frequency of the headache. For the episodic tension type headache, there is a frequency uh, for the infrequent episodic tension headache for at least 10 headache episodes um, that uh, is occurring uh, less than one day a month. And we have the frequent episodic, episodic tension type headache with a frequency of at least 10 headache episodes occurring on average 1 to 14 days per month. The pathophysiological models for the tension type headache are described in an article by Ashina in uh, 2022. And um, this article describes four models uh, for, the, um, for the pathophysiological um, uh, ex explanations of the tension type headache. It's about the genetic disposition it's about peripheral sensitization and also the central mechanisms. Not only want to test the peripheral uh, sensitization, but also the central sensitization in patients with headache. You have to test several sites. As shown here, you have to test the suboccipital muscles, the midpoint of the trapezius. Uh, you can um, do it on a remote sites as well at the forearm and at the tibialis anterior muscle. This is another model that we have described in an article uh, that we have uh, published. Um, it's about uh, how the efferent information is transferred towards the trigeminal cervical nucleus. And this is the trigeminal cervical complex within the midbrain. And you can see it is divided in three parts, the pars ordalis, the pars interpolaris, and the pars caudalis. And for us, for headache and attention type headache, this lower part, the pars caudalis, is um, very important to know. Because all afferent information is transferred via the first order neurons towards this pars caudalis. And this pars caudalis is located at the dorsal horn of C1 and C2. Not only the afferent information from the optomic nerve is transferred towards this dorsal horn of C1, C2, but also the afferent information of the upper cervical segments are transferred towards, towards this dorsal horn C1, C2. And um, this um, afferent information is uh, have a merge. Um, there's a convergence of this afferent information from the optomic nerve and from the occipital, uh, the greater occipital nerve at the dorsal horn of C1 and C2. After this information um, is trespassing the, the thresholds of the second order neurons, you can see um, that the second order neurons are, uh, are trans transferring the, their information via the spinothalamic tract towards the thalamus and also towards the somatic sensory cortex. Here you can see that um, for the tension type headache, for the flexion and extension, there is a difference uh, between the um, group of patients with the tension type headache, the gonic and the episodic tension type headache compared to, uh, to the controls, to the healthy controls. And that is also uh, uh, the case for uh, rotation, the left and right rotation. You can see there is a mean difference of 15 degrees uh, between patients with a tension type headache compared to controls. And even for the lateral flexion, uh, the right and left lateral flexion together, there is a um, mean difference of uh, five degrees. And now um, we will uh, talk about the flexion rotation test. And this is about uh, the assessment of the 
rotation of the upper cervical segments. With the patient in a relaxed lying position and the cervical spine passively fully flexed, the head is then passively rotated to the left and right position. Take care of the position of the patient's head. The left and right rotation of the upper cervical spine has to be performed in a one-dimensional direction. The range is determined either by the patient reporting the onset of pain or firm resistance observed by the physiotherapist. Whichever will come first. In clinical practice, if there is an eyeball difference between the left and right rotation at the first test, a serum can be placed on the patient's head to verify the measurements as shown in this video. A goniometer can also be used to measure the range of motion. The flexion rotation test is positive if the range of motion is limited more than 10 degrees from the anticipated normal range of 44 degrees with a standard deviation of 8 degrees. A recent article by uh, Fernandez Les Peñas um, uh, show us the, the, the physical uh, treatment options for the tension type headache. And first of all, we have to assess the cervical musculoskeletal impairments that uh, are present in a patient with a tension type headache. And first of all, we have to assess that kind of cervical uh, musculoskeletal impairments before, before we set up uh, a certain treatment. And within the cervical uh, assessment uh, of patients with, um, with tension type headache, we can see um, is there a flexion rotation test positive? Uh, is there a reduced uh, cervical range of motion? Um, is there a change in muscle strength? And also, um, are there trigger points um, present in the patient with tension type headache? As we look at the effectiveness of physical treatment, and we have to look at the ranking of the, um, of the therapies. And then you can see that mental therapy and exercises is most effective compared to all the other treatments. So a large P-score indicates a better treatment. And here you can see that mental therapy for the headache frequency is the most effective treatment. For the headache intensity, you can see here that the largest uh, P-score is on uh, TENS and a combination of physiotherapy uh, techniques but also that mental therapy uh, and joint mobilization and exercises um, has a large P-score. What is uh, the conclusion of this systematic review? Is the clinical reasoning and physical treatment of tension type headache is very important. And one of the most important things I think uh, within our clinical practice is that you do a proper pain assessment. You can do that with the pressure pain thresholds in patients with episodic and chronic tension type headache, but for sure in patients with chronic tension type headache to assess also the central sensitization in, in, in those patients, uh, but also uh, to assess the referred pain by the testing as described by Dean Watson. Also, in this kind of programs, you have to include an active treatment program with home exercises. As you can see, to treat not only on the short term, but also to have some results on the long term, you have to include the exercises to have a frequency of headache that is decreased not only after the intervention period, but also at the longer term. Thank you for your uh, attention to this uh, webinar. And if you want to uh, learn something more about headache, but not all uh, tension type headache, but also on migraine, you can uh, consider my full online course with Fisio Tutors. Okay, thank you.